It's not easy to make a headset comfortable. You must balance several elements just right to avoid an unergonomic and expensive mess. Luckily for you, the HS80 Max has been designed ingeniously to avoid these potential issues. Corsair, why are you lying to us? Corsair's HS80 Max has a lot going for it that should make this an easy choice for those who are looking for a premium gaming headset. And yet, I can't recommend using this headset despite the great sound and plushy ear cups. We're gonna review what makes this headset stand out, how well it sounds, and why we want to love it, but can't. The HS80 Max is one of the newest audio offerings from Corsair that builds upon the success of the HS80. The HS80 and the HS80 Max are aesthetically similar with the same floating headband, cloth fabric memory foam ear cups, flip to mute omnidirectional microphone, and steel gray or white color options. You get the same customization as the HS80 RGB model with the glowing Corsair logos on both sides of the headset. Under the hood, you also get the same 50 millimeter neodymium drivers, a bit depth of 24, and a sample rate of 48 kilohertz on Bluetooth. Tooth. This rate increases to 96 kHz when connected to the new 2.4 GHz dongle. Looks wise, the HS80 Max has a clean design without an overabundance of RGB. We're not a fan of the exposed wiring feeding into the ear cup. It's not really an aesthetic dislike so much as we don't like running the chance of the headset breaking from the cable getting snagged on something. I'm sure it's okay for most people, but it's still something to address. Some of us also prefer a mic with a detachable or retractable microphone, although this one is thin enough to be unnoticeable when flipped up and not distracting when down. People will still know that this is a gaming headset if you take it anywhere else though. It would have been nice to see the HS80 Max ship with a cardioid mic rather than an omnidirectional one. It doesn't pick up a lot of background noise, but I could still hear my mechanical keyboard clacking away when testing it out. That isn't to say the quality is poor since voices come across clearly. Still, it's not the best mic we've used on a headset. And we couldn't find mention of this anywhere, but I would like to know if the mic does come with onboard noise canceling since it seems like it does and it would help to justify that $180 price point. But what separates the HS80 Max from the original HS80 and HS80 RGB is an improved battery, which Corsair says can last up to 65 hours while on the 2.4 gigahertz connection the Max gets. You can switch back and forth between 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth by pressing the power button once, though the audio streams are kept separate. I'd say that 65 hours is pretty accurate as we've only had to charge this headset once over the week we tested it. And that's a sizable upgrade over the HS80, which only had around 20 hours on Bluetooth when the RGB was off and about six to eight hours when they were on. Considering 2.4 gigahertz uses more power than Bluetooth, that long battery life is impressive, as is the Bluetooth connection now lasting up to 130 hours on a single charge. The 65 hour battery life only applies when RGB is off, as you only get about 24 hours with the lights on. Still, that is a long time before you have to charge compared to what the HS80 users have had to experience. Corsair also improved sound adjustments by adding sound ID software into IQ that replaces the EQ settings when selected. IQ software, which while powerful in what it can do, can be a chore based on the litany of bugs and glitches it has. You can use IQ to set key assignments, lighting effects, and macros for the headset, though you're limited in what's assignable. Corsair's headsets can also access NVIDIA broadcast and voice mod effects that are programmable in key assignments. Instead of using EQ presets, Sound ID lets you create a personalized sound profile tuned to how you hear. My results show that my left ear has some hearing loss, which is fair since I have tinnitus. On the other hand, Desmond is more sensitive to sounds, especially in his left ear. But with the profile on, the bass is punchy, mids are balanced, and lows stay prominent without drowning out highs. Music and games sound especially great with 3D audio turned on, and FPS gamers should thoroughly enjoy the 3D audio as locational sounds like footsteps and gunshots are accurately picked up and placed around your head. We also tested how 3D audio sounds on the PS5 and Returnal, a game that uses a lot of audio cues, and the results weren't as good as they were on PC. It's likely because the Sound ID profile only works when connected to IQ, but it only shows how untuned the HS80 Max is out of the box without adjustments. It would have been cool if the headset could save an onboard Sound ID profile to use with consoles. And although I enjoy this headset sounds, I cannot say the same about wearing them. One of the things Corsair boasts about with the HS80 Max is how comfortable its floating headband design is. To us, it is the complete opposite. Sure, the cloth-bound memory foam ear cups are soft to the touch, but that means nothing when you have so much pressure on your temples from the actual headband. You can immediately feel the pressure when you put these on, making them uncomfortable in just a few minutes and can be unbearable after about 20 minutes. It's worse when you have a hat on and the worst when you wear glasses. One of us even got a headache after spending less than an hour wearing these during testing. And considering Corsair claimed to have addressed these problems with the elastic band on 
on their website, I can't help but feel disappointed. According to Corsair, the elastic band should alleviate the pressure you'd otherwise feel from the rigid band by spreading it evenly across your cranium. But no matter how we adjusted the band, which is cumbersome since it uses Velcro, the pressure never disappeared from right here. We're unsure if this is because the elastic is too rigid, but the headset feels like it's trying to slide up your head rather than staying put. We had everyone in this office try these on, and we all experienced the same temple pressure after a minute or two. If you have a smaller head than us, you may have a better experience, but it seems like this is a recurring issue for those who've used the HS80s. And what's funny and surprising is that Corsair doubled down on this design. The company even boasts that people would wear the headset longer than average since the headband and ear cuffs make it so comfortable. And I can tell you right now, I'm not wearing these things longer than 10 minutes. This problem would have been avoidable if it had used extendable rigid headbands like most premium gaming headsets though. And unfortunately, I, I really wanted to like this headset. The EQ from Sound ID improves the sound quality considerably from out of the box settings, though I wish I could have saved the profile so it was on device to use with consoles or just to easily pair with other PCs. The ear cups are soft and should be very comfortable on your head, but I just can't get past the unpleasantness that I feel with these on and neither can anybody else in the office. The pressure is inescapable and ruins an otherwise great pair of headphones from being among the top picks in the market. I recommend looking elsewhere for a more comfortable headset with a similar price, as these are just not it.